بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وعلى من تبع هداهم إلى يوم الدين Indeed all praises due to Allah and my peace and blessings be upon his messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وآله وصلم وسلم <coughs> The Our topic is the Sahaba رضي الله عنهم وأرضاهم those are the ones who had made the history. The ones whom Allah Azza wa Jal had praised in his book and the Prophet Sallallahu he praised in his sunnah. Min al-mu'minina ridalun sadaqu ma'ahadu Allah alayhi. From the believers there were men. And men here is not talking about in terms of, is it men as in women and men? No, it's not talking about that. It's talking about the true people who are dedicated to their religion. So this includes as well the wives of the Prophet Sallallahu and the companions and the wives of the companions. So the people who were truthful to the covenant of the law, فَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ قَضَى نَحْبَهُ Some of them had already proved to be a martyr. وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَنْتَظِرُ And some of them still are waiting. وَمَا بَدَّلُوا تَبْدِيلًا And they did not change. That means they did not return back on their heels as disbelievers. And uh, today we're going to be talking about one of those companions whom Allah spoke directly, that is, about him. Man qadha nahma. From those who had been martyred. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was asked by a Bedouin man a number of times, who are those people who had qadha nahma? Who have we been? And what Allah is speaking about. Prophet sallallahu went quiet once, twice, three times. And after that, he saw talha. Ibn Ubaidillah, this is the companion that we're going to be talking about, coming inside and he said, who's the person who would ask me about the person who had qadha nahba, that means he was a martyr. He said, me, Messenger of Allah, he said, this is, or he is one of those who had, or whom Allah Azza wa Jal meant, man qadha nahba. Talhat ibn Ubaidillah ibn Uthman al-Taymi al-Qurashi, his kunya is Abu Muhammad, from the first predecessors to Islam. He is from the ten who have been given glad tidings of paradise, from the eight who were preceding or the ones who embraced Islam at the beginning, and one of the five who had embraced Islam on the hand of Abu Bakr, and one of the six whom Umar al Khattab was appointed from the Shura. So again, he's from the ten whom the Prophet had given glad tidings of paradise. He's from the eight who were uh, uh, who embraced Islam at the beginning. And he's one of the five who had embraced Islam on the hands of Abu Bakr and one of the six of the Shura whom Umar al Khattab had appointed. His sons are Yahya and Musa and Isa. So, Yahya and Musa and Isa, all of them are the sons of Talha radiallahu anhu wa He was not participating in the Battle of Badr, but if you mention the, Mount, the Battle of Uhud, he is to be mentioned. In the Battle of Badr, he was in a merchandise in Bilad al-Sham, so he was not amongst the companions. And that is why when the Prophet Sallallahu won the battle against the Kuffar, he had given a share of the war booty to uh, uh, Talhat ibn Ubaidillah, even though he did not participate. Because he did not participate, that means willing to, I mean, I mean as in uh, he was reluctant to do so, but actually, it was outside his hand, I mean, he was not there. And that is why the Prophet of Allah had given him as well the share of the war booty, like he had given to the rest who had participated in the battle. In the Battle of Uhud, as I said, it's going to be inshallah mentioned in a minute, he is to be mentioned. Radiallahu anhu wa arda. As in terms of the story of how he embraced Islam, we said that he embraced Islam on the hands of Abu Bakr. But there's a story where he had met a rabbi or a priest whom had asked about the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and uh, he had asked and then that's how he knew about the Messenger of Allah. And he came to Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu asking and he was he just found the Prophet of Allah with Abu Bakr and that's you could say a trace of how he embraced Islam. His virtues as I said number one he had been testified by the Prophet of Allah to be from the people of Jannah. When he said Abu Bakr in Jannah, Umar in Jannah, he mentioned Talha is to be in the Jannah. And also in the Battle of Uhud, he said, Awjaba Talha, that means Talha will have Jannah, paradise. 
Also from his virtues and excellencies of the Prophet ﷺ, he said that he will die as a martyr for Abu Hurairah. He narrated the hadith which we narrated a number of times. When the Prophet of Allah, he was on the mountain of Uhud, Prophet ﷺ, he said, stay, st stay steady, Uhud. Stay steady. That means he was shaken. Stop shaking, O Uhud, for verily upon you is a Prophet or a Siddiq or a Shaheed. And on the, Prophet, on the mountain was the Prophet ﷺ and Abu Bakr who was a Siddiq. As for the martyr, he said Umar and Uthman and Ali and Talha and Zubair and Sa'd and Nabi Waqas. Again, Umar and Uthman and Ali and Talha and Zubair and Sa'd and Nabi Waqas. So all of those are to be Shaheed. And also, Prophet ﷺ, he said, he who wants to look at somebody who's a Shaheed who was walking on the land, then let him look at Talha ibn Ubaidillah. How did Talha ibn Ubaidillah die as a Shaheed? Actually, Talha ibn Ubaidillah, he died in the battle of Al-Jaman, Harakat Al-Jaman, which is, took a conflict between the companions. Marwan ibn Al-Hakam, he saw him. And as soon as he saw him, he said, today I'm going to take my revenge. He is the one who had contributed in the killing of Uthman. Of course, this is not, not really right. He did not contribute in the killing of Uthman. So he had uh, shot him with an arrow in his knee, and then the blood started going gushing out of him until he died. And that is in the year 36 of Hijrah, and he was 40 or 64 years old. He was 64 years old. So that was in the 36th year after Hijrah, and he was 64 years old, and that's why he's a Shaheed, a martyr. From his as well virtues and attributes, that the Prophet وسلم, died while he was pleased with him. This is what Umar al Khattab had said while he was on the death. Uh, he was on, on, uh, he was di dying. He said, uh, the companion said to him, "Go ahead, counsel us, O leader of the believers. Uh, what should we? Who should we put uh, instead of you when you uh, when you uh, die?" He said, well, "I can't find better people to be appointed from." than those whom Allah's Messenger died while he was pleased with them. So he named Ali, Uthman, Zubair, Talha, and Sa'ad, and Abdul Rahman. Again, those are the Shura members. Again, Ali, Uthman, Zubair, Talha, and Sa'ad, and Abdul Rahman ibn Awf. Sa'ad ibn Waqas, of course. So this is why we say from his excellencies that the Prophet of Allah died while he was pleased with him. Al Imam Bukhari, he says, Rahimahullah, that is Talha ibn Ubaidillah. He said that is the mentioning of him. And then he mentioned Umar al-Khattab saying the words that the Prophet of Allah died while he was pleased with him. From his excellencies as well, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that he is one of those who had been Qadha Nahma. That means he was martyred in that verse, Qadha Nahma. And he had also uh, uh, been fulfilled what he had, uh, Allah had promised him. So he had, you know, vowed himself to fight in the sake of Allah, to champion the religion of Islam, and then Allah Azza wa Jal had fulfilled him his vow. Uh, Musa ibn Talha, the son of his, he says, I entered upon Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan radiallahu anhu, and I, he said to me, shall I give you a glad tiding? For well, I heard the Prophet sallam saying, Talha min man qadana. But that means he's telling him that your father he is one of those whom the Prophet of Allah said he had been, or he was one of the martyrs whom Allah spoke about. Qada, aminhum, aminhum man Talha, also he said, that is the Prophet of Allah, some companions, they said to an Arabi, he was an ignorant man, ask the Prophet of Allah about who had Qada Nahba in that verse. And because they were not you know, daring to ask the Prophet ﷺ about these things because of uh, the sheer reverence they have to the Prophet of Allah. So they always await for uh, an Arabi Bedouin man who used to dare himself unto the Prophet ﷺ so much that even if he was in the Khutbah al Jum'ah, he would interrupt the Prophet of Allah and he would ask him. So he asked the Arabi, uh, the Prophet ﷺ and the Prophet of Allah did not answer him once, twice, and after that, when Talha came from the gate of the masjid and he had green clothes. The Prophet Sallam, he saw him, he said, who's the one who was asking about the one whom uh, Allah spoke about, Qadha Nahba, and he said, was a martyr, Al-Arabi, the Bedouin man, he said, me messenger of Allah. So the Prophet of Allah, he said, he, that is 
Talha radiallahu an is from those whom Allah spoke about. Talha ibn Ubaidillah, when he came to the Medina, Prophet sallam, he made brotherhood between him and Abu Ayyub al-Ansari. So he was the brother uh, of Abu Ayyub al-Ansari. And from his excellencies as well, that is the Prophet sallam companions, he's one of the companions who was really eager to know the haqq and the truth and to learn from the Prophet of Allah. Talha, he said to the Prophet sallam, Messenger of Allah, how do I pass the prayer upon you? Prophet sallam, he said, say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim inna ka hamidun majeed. We should we know the salat Ibrahim that we do in the salah. Because the Prophet of Allah, uh, he was asked, you know, the, the companions and the believers were asked to, Ya ayyuhaladina amanu, that is, to make salah upon the Prophet sallam. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallim wa taslima. How do you make the salah, Messenger of Allah, upon you? How do you make salah upon you? He said, say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. So he taught him the salah. So he was eager to, to learn. And also, Talha radiallahu anhu, he said, we used to pray while the uh, animals, they used to pass between us and our sutra, or between us and our, you know, the thing that we take in order to pray. So uh, the Prophet sallam, he mentioned that if you had the backbone, which has been used for the rider on the camel to be put in front of the person when he prays, then there is nothing would harm him if anything passes. So here this hadith has been taken by Shaykh al-Albani rahimahullah to be, that is, that if you took sutra, it doesn't matter whether this person had passed beyond the sutra or in between you and the sutra. So if you took the sutra, like for example, this microphone, and you tried to push any person away from passing between you and your microphone, which is the stand, but this person had managed to do so, he will not break your prayer. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, لا يضره شيء. لا يضره ما مر عليه. Also, we find that uh, Talha رضي الله عنه وارضاه ابن عبيد الله uh, He was married to four wives. And all of them, they had sisters from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wa Sallam. This with me please, because I, I missed that. <clears throat> Right. He was married to four women, and each one of these women has a sister that the Prophet ﷺ had married to. Those women are as follows, Umm Kulthum, which is the daughter of Abu Bakr radiallahu anh, and Umm Kulthum, she's the sister of Aisha. And Himna bintu Jahsh, and she was the sister of Zainab, and she was married to the Prophet ﷺ. And also al Fari'ah. Went to Abi Sufyan, she was the sister of Umm Habibah, who was the wife of the Prophet. And Ruqayyah went to Abi Umayyah, and she was the sister of Umm Salama, who was the wife of the Prophet. So he had been married to four wives. I repeat, Umm Kulthu, sister of Aisha, Himna went to Jahsh, sister of Zainab, and Fari'ah went to Abi Sufyan, sister of Umm Habibah, Ruqayyah went to Abi Umayyah, the sister of Umm Salama. Talha radiallahu anhu wardah, one day he had Umar al Khattab entering upon him and he saw him sad. So he said to him, Abu Muhammad, they call me Abu Talha, why are you sad? Is it your wife, the wife which is the uh, wife of your cousin, and he meant Abu Bakr, and then he meant Umm Kulthu. Did she make you upset? Did he make you upset? Did he make you upset? Did, he, did she make you upset? So he said, no. And he started praising Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. But I've heard the Prophet Sallallahu saying, this is why he was upset, that a kalima, Prophet of Allah saying, a word, a person says it before he dies, then Allah will ease his calamity and his, his color will be lightened and his will be good. So I did not ask the Prophet of Allah because I was really, uh, you know, sort of because of the reverence, the respect I had to him. And then he died. So that's why he was sad. He didn't know what was that word. And the Prophet of Allah said 
that if you say it when you die or just before you die, Allah will ease your calamities. Abu Khattafi said, Firdi, I know it. Talha, he said, what is it? He said, do you know any word which is greater in the sight of Allah than a word which the Prophet himself وسلم, commanded his uncle with? That is, La ilaha illallah. Talha, he said, Wallahi, it is that word. So he remembered. Now, so Talha, radiallahu anh, he was eager to learn from the Prophet وسلم, and to teach as well. Now we come to his stands. One of them is his courageous and, uh, in, in the battles. If we mention the Battle of Uhud, it is the day of Talha. They used to say, the companions, this day is all of it to Talha. Abu Bakr, whenever the day of Uhud is mentioned, he would cry. And he would say, all of that day belongs to Talha. When the time of Uhud, when the companions left the Prophet Messenger of Allah, he was amongst 12 men. Amongst them, Talha to Ubaidillah. Kuffar came, they wanted to kill the Prophet ﷺ. The Messenger of Allah, he said, who is going to protect me? Talha, he said, me. Prophet of Allah said, just stay put. A man from the Ansar, he said, Messenger of Allah, I'll do so. He said, you? Okay, go ahead. So he goes and fights until he is being martyred and killed. So the Kuffar come back again. Prophet of Allah is saying, who is going to be protecting me? So Talha, he says, me. He said, you stay put. A man from the Ansar, he said, me, okay, Messenger of Allah, he said, you, you go ahead. So he fought until he killed. And he was saying until third time, he said it, who's going to stop before the Lord, stop the Kuffar? Talha again says, Messenger of Allah, me. SubhanAllah, it's all the time he is. So then Talha, radiallahu anh, he started fighting. And he, all the 12, 11 men before him, they were killed except for him, and he fought as much as those 11 men. He fought as much as they were, they were fighting, until his hand was struck by the sword, and it was cut off, the fingers of it, trying to protect the Prophet ﷺ. There was a sword coming from the Kuffar onto the, the Prophet of Allah. So with his hand, he tried to protect it, protect the Messenger of Allah, and his fingers were cut. So he said the word, hiss, this is when somebody, you know, have something which is painful, he would say, yeah. so he said, his Prophet of Allah said, Wallah, if you said, Bismillah, the name of Allah, the angels would flew and make you, and they would took you and fly, and the people would be looking at that. So that means that you would be carried by the angels, and they would be, you know, flying over them until the people would see. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala defeated the mushrikeen and they left. Khalid ibn Qaysi said, they used to see the hand of Talha, which he had protected the Prophet with, it was paralyzed and cut. And the hands of it, it was, and the fingers of it, they were cut. Uh, also, the, we find him in the Battle of Uhud. He, radiallahu anhu wa had helped the Prophet وسلم, to climb on top of a rock by putting his belly as like a, a ladder or a platform where the Prophet وسلم, he had put his foot there and then he climbed on top of the rock and in that, moment Prophet he said, Awjaba Talha Talha, he deserves paradise. Aisha and Um Ishaq, the two daughters of Talha, so we said he's got sons and he's got two daughters as well. Aisha and Um Ishaq. They said that our father, who is Talha, he was uh, wounded on the day of Uhud, 24 wounds. Some of them, they were in his head and they were like a square wound. And also his fingers, they were cut off and all his wounds were, they were in his body. And he almost fainted and lost consciousness. And the Prophet Sallallahu he had, his morals were broken, the teeth. And he had as well a cut in his face. And almost he was as well fainted, the Prophet Sallallahu But Talha, he was carrying him and he was protecting him and going backwards, trying to protect the Prophet Sallallahu Every time the fighter from the Quraysh, Kuffar, tries to fight the Prophet of Allah, he would fight him until he would protect him. Prophet also said in the day of Uhud, again, awjaba talha, as he had made an act which he deserved Jannah with. That is, he had put the Messenger of Allah on top of his back. So he kneeled, knelt for him, talha, and the Prophet of Allah went on top of his back. 
and the Talha carried the Messenger of Allah. We find also from his stance in his uh, as well generosity. He was so generous. He was known to be Talha al-Fayyad, extra generous al-Fayyad. So he used to spend in the way of Allah Azza wa Jal. Let's see some of the examples for that. Talha ibn Ubaidillah, he had a sold a land with 700,000. And you get 700,000 these days, you can't sleep the night trying to, you know, protect your money, or trying to do something to hide them from the people, or thinking what you're going to buy the following day. But he couldn't sleep the night because of too much money with him, and he dies, it's going to be asked about it. So he had spent it straight away. <laughs> Arabi came to Talha Bidwin, and he was asking him for money. And then he told him that, you know, I so and so, that means I'm from your family. And he told him that I belong to such and such father, such and such tribe, that means I've got some relationship with you, kinship. So he said, very, you are a kinship, and you asked me something that nobody had asked me before. For very, I've got a land, and Uthman, he had, you know, gave me for that land, if you want, you know, he said to me, well, you know, pay me 300,000. Go ahead and uh, take it from him and give him the land, or or you could just wait until I will sell it to Uthman, I will give you the money. So he said, no, I want the money. So he gave him the money, 300,000. Also, people from the tribe of Udrah, there were three, they came to the Prophet ﷺ and embraced Islam. Messenger of Allah, he said, who's going to be entertaining, entertaining them as in guests? Talha, he said, I will do so. So they were with Talha and the Prophet وسلم, he made an expedition for fight, and those three went one after the other. The first one went and he was martyred. Then he sent another expedition and the second one went and he was martyred. Then after that, the third one died on his bed. He did not die as a martyr. Talha, he said, I saw a dream, a vision, of those three people who were, you know, in my house, all of them in Jannah, but the one who was uh, in his bed, and he died in his bed, not died as a martyr, he was the first in front of them. And as for the ones who, you know, was a martyr, he was the second, the one who was later on, he was a martyr, he was behind him. And the first one who was martyred, first one, he was the last. So I was really confused in my dreams. I came to the Prophet ﷺ in order for him to interpret it for me. So the Messenger of Allah he said, why did you uh, sort of feel that this is strange? Why are you really feeling this is really not right. For verily, uh, there is nobody has more virtues than a person who would live longer in Islam because of his tasbih and takbir and tahdeel. So the last one who died as a normal person, not as a martyr, he had more time in Islam making tasbih and takbir and tahleel, which made him to deserve to be the first in Jannah. That is why we say to the brothers, don't you ever wish for death. Always wish for a long life, but full of good deeds. So Talha radiallahu anh, he was called Talhatul Fayyad. The Prophet وسلم, one day he purchased, he had a, one of the wills uh, to be purchased and he himself, he purchased it, Talha radiallahu anh, arda, and also he gave it to the water and he has well slaughtered camels and he had spread the camel meat amongst the people. And that's why he was called Talhatul Fayyad. Finally, we come to his admonitions. Talha radiallahu anh, from his admonishing, we find him, he said, don't consult a stingy, and that is a miser, regarding giving money into charity. <laughs> because if you're going to consult a stingy, he's not going to tell you to go and spend money. And don't consult a coward in a war, because you're not going to tell you to go and fight. And don't consult a young chap regarding marrying a girl. But it is going to marry her himself. And also, the Allah he said, He who wants to make the people not to know a lot about his defects, then let him sit at home. For that is the person who mixes up with the people, his deen will be taken away while he doesn't feel it. And this is the same thing which when a man came to the Prophet, and he said, Messenger of Allah, what is salvation? He said, Hold on to your tongue, now keep it in check and keep your house and that is weep over your sins 
And also, radiallahu anhu said, for verily, we feel the same thing regarding our money, what the stingy feels. What does the stingy feel? He doesn't want to spend it. The same thing, we feel the same thing. I mean, we're a human being. And when we get the money, we want to keep it to ourselves. But we be patient. That's the difference. So we get, we train ourselves to be patient in order to spend this money and to release it because ourselves tells us what? To keep it, not to spend it. So we be patient. So there's no such thing that we have different feeling from other people. People think that he's a sheikh, no problem for my wife to go and talk to him on his own. That's not right. Sheikh has got as well the lust. So some people as well take his wife to a doctor. A male doctor said, no problem, he's a doctor. Why, he's going to switch off his lust? He's a doctor. He's a human being, he's a man. He's going to have the same thing. So then you have a thing, oh, the doctor has got no lust whatsoever. They're, mashallah. No, same thing. So the same thing he says here, we find the same thing regarding our money. What the miser and the stingy finds. And he doesn't want to spend it, but we, you know, put our effort to be patient. Same thing, the ones who fear Allah Azza wa Jal, they will keep their... They lower their gaze and keep their sight down and all the time they will not look. But they do have inside themselves the same thing that the naughty person has. Exactly the same thing. But they restrict themselves and say, Fear Allah Azza wa Jal. And this is for us, radiallahu anhu, Talha ibn Ubaidillah. Right, after that, we come to Sa'id ibn Zayd, ibn Amr ibn Mufayd. Sayyid ibn Zayd, ibn Amr ibn Nufayl, ibn Abdul Uzza al-Adawi, one of the ten, the last one was mentioned, whom the Prophet Sallallahu said, ten out of paradise, one of them is Sayyid ibn Zayd ibn Amr ibn Nufayl. He had embraced Islam before the Prophet Sallallahu entered the Dar al-Arqam. He migrated and he witnessed Uhud and he witnessed all the fights after that. But he was not in the Medina in the time of Badr, so he did not witness it. So we got Talha and Sa'id ibn Zubayr, and he did not witness the battle of Badr. And he was as well, radiallahu anh, a narrator of the hadiths. So lots of the hadiths would be narrated from Sa'id ibn Zayd. Even that Sayyid ibn Zaydi was not participating in the Battle of Badr, Prophet of Allah, he gave him his share from the Wubuti, just like he gave Talha as well. Because he was, as I said, was not there, he was absent. His Islam was before Umar al-Khattab, so he was from the predecessors, but not as early as Talha, radiallahu anhu wa And he was the husband of... Uh, He was uh, his, his wife, she was the sister of Umar radiallahu anhu. And that is why Umar al-Khattab radiallahu anhu arda, he had punished him while he was a Muslim. I mean, he was under persecution. The sister of Umar, she was Fatima, her name, as her, his wife, Bismillah. The story which says, that one day Umar al-Khattab came to the house of his sister and she was studying from the Quran and her husband hid himself and which is a story which you could see it in the film of Risala in the message this is unauthentic where he had slapped his sister all of that is not from the authenticity of that and it shows that Umar al-Khattab he had embraced Islam from that story all the stories regarding Umar al-Khattab's Islam are to be weak except for one or two where Umar al-Khattab, he radiallahu anhu, when he went to follow the Prophet sallam, to the Masjid al-Haram, and then he heard Surat al-Haqqa. And while he was reciting Prophet sallam, Surat al-Haqqa, the Islam entered his heart. That's the, you could say, the most authentic story regarding his Islam. <coughs> right, Sayyid al Zayd, there's not a lot we have regarding him from the authenticity. But we have regarding his father. His father is Zayd ibn Amr ibn Nufayl. 
He was from the people of we call them Al-Hunafa, upon the Hanifiyyah, Al-Hanifiyyah to Samha, which is the religion of Ibrahim, which is Islam. And this is before the Prophet of Allah had the revelation. He was one of those people who does not slaughter for the idols, nor he would eat from the carrion, nor he would eat the blood. And he used to say to his people, O oh, people of Quraysh, how can I eat what you have slaughtered for other than Allah? Wallahi, there is no one upon the religion of Ibrahim except for myself. Not only that, he used to say to them uh, things like the sheep, Allah created it. And Allah provided it with the rain from the heavens. And Allah gave it the crops from the earth. And yet you slaughter it on the name of other than the name of Allah. How can you do that? I will not eat from what you slaughter because you slaughter it to other than Allah and in the name of other than the name of Allah. That's Zayd ibn Amr ibn Nufay. So Zayd ibn Amr ibn Nufay, he is where Jannah Harifah is in Jannah, the words of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he met that messenger of Allah. And he used to, as well, when he rotates around the Kaaba, he doesn't what touch? The idols. He doesn't touch the idols. One day, radiallahu anhu, he, uh, I would say, radiallahu anhu is not a Sahabi. He's not a Sahabi because, he, as I said, he did not uh, embrace Islam when the Prophet, because he did not see the Prophet when he had the revelation. One day, he says that the, uh, we say, Abdullah ibn Umar, he says that the Messenger of Allah said that he had met Zayd ibn Amr ibn Ufayn in a valley in Mecca. And that was before the revelation. So he provided him with the food. So the Prophet Allah gave food, slaughtering sort of meat to Zayd. And it was had meat, so he did not eat from it. So he said, I don't eat from what you slaughter. Zayd, he thought that this meat, which is from the meat which Allah had made unlawful, that is the meat which has been slaughtered in the name of Allah, and Allah Azza wa Jal. And of course we know for sure that the house of the Prophet وسلم, even before Islam, before revelation, they don't eat from what is being slaughtered to them or for the sake of the idols. But as I said, he wants to make sure and also he wants to declare his methodology and his religion. That means I don't eat those things. And he didn't know as well. He was not really, he was, he was under the impression that this meat still from the meat which Quraysh slaughters to other than Allah Azza wa Jal. So Zayd ibn Amr ibn Fayyid, which is the, the father of Sa'id ibn Zayd. Sa'id ibn Zayd, as I said, from the predecessors of Islam, but does not as Talha. And Umar al-Khattab used to torture him, as we have said. From his uh, manaqib of virtues, that he's one of the ten we have said, and all the time, Sa'id ibn Zayd, when he raised the hadith of the ten in Jannah, he would not mention his name. He would say, if you wish, I would call you the 10th, or they will name you the 10th. And they would get called quiet. So they would ask him, who is the 10th? He would say, Sayyid ibn Zayd himself, because he doesn't want to boast about that. He said, if you want, I will mention you the 10th one. And also Sayyid ibn Zayd, he said, I am the 10th of 10. And he mentioned the companion, radiallahu anhu wa arda. And whenever, radiallahu anhu wa arda, as well, he's been attacked, he would resort to Allah the Almighty and he would all the time as well use the story which he had heard from the Prophet One day Arwah went to Uwais. She claimed that Sa'id ibn Zayd himself, that is, our companion, had taken something from her land. So she went to Marwan ibn Hakam to raise her matter. So Sa'id radiallahu anhu, he's saying, Am I going to take anything from her land after I heard what I heard from the Prophet of Allah? I heard from the Messenger of Allah, he said, he who takes one hand span, as little as that, one hand span from a land which is unjustly, with no due right, Allah will, will uh, wrap him until or tawatah, that means he will make him to go uh, underneath seven lands or surrounded by seven lands, which is a punishment. The Almighty Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to prayer for those who are oppressors. So Marwani said, I'm not going to ask you for a proof after I've heard this. Sayyid, he said, verily by Allah, if she is a liar, oh Allah, make her to be blind and kill her in her own land. So she did not die until she lost her sight. I mean, she was blind. And while she was walking in her land, she fell in a ditch and she died. 
So this is to fulfill the hadith of the Prophet who said, be aware, watch out for the supplication of an oppressed person. But there is no barrier between it and Allah. Allah will fulfill that. And also the Prophet he said, be aware of the supplication of the oppressed. For verily it will climb up, it will go up to the sky, to the heaven, just like a spark. And also he said, three supplications will be fulfilled. Supplication of the father, the mother, father and mother, the wife, against the son or daughter and the traveler and also the oppressed. In terms of also his virtues, we're finding that he's one of the martyrs, which the Prophet talked about when he was on the mountain of Uhud. Uthbut Uhud, stay steady Uhud, overly upon you as a Prophet. Fana Sadiq and Shaheed, and he mentioned, as well as Sa'id ibn Zayd, he was amongst the, those companions who were on top of the mountain. Also, in terms of his defense regarding the companions of the Prophet of Allah, we find ourselves that. Uh, in a story which is mentioned by one of those people who are the followers, Rabah ibn Harith, he said, I was sitting in, with so and so, he did not mention his name, in the Masjid of Al Kufa. And the people of Kufa, they were around. Sayyid ibn Zayd, the companion, came. So he welcomed him and he put him next to his you know, legs onto the, uh, like a, it's like a couch. And a man from Ahl al Kufa, from those who are innovators, came. And his name is Qais ibn Al-Qamah. So when he met him, he started to <laughs> insult and insult. So Sayyid ibn Zayd, he said, who's going to insult this man? Who is this man insulting? So he said, he started swearing. So he said, Sayyid ibn who's swearing against? He said, he's swearing against Ali. So if he's swearing against Ali, who's he going to be amongst whom? Khawarib, very good. So he was insulting Ali, Said he said, very deep. I can't understand, I can't believe that the companions of the Messenger of Allah being insulted in your presence to that man who was in the masjid. And you don't do anything, and you don't change the evil. Well, you hear the Prophet Sallallahu saying, I am not really, I am gonna say to you, I am not gonna change the words of the Prophet of Allah, dare me to say something that the Messenger of Allah did not say, and then Allah, will ask me for that on the day of resurrection. For verily I've heard him saying, the Messenger of Allah, he's saying, Abu Bakr in Jannah, Umar in Jannah, Uthman in Jannah, Ali in Jannah, and Talha in Jannah, and Zubayr in Jannah, Abdul Rahman in Jannah, Sa'd ibn Mal in Jannah, and the ninth believer is in Jannah. And if you wish, I would call his name. So the people in the masjid started saying, by Allah, tell us, O, masjid, o companion of the Messenger of Allah, who is the ninth? He said, well, you've got to ask me by Allah, you beseech me by Allah, and Allah is great, I am the ninth believer. And the Prophet وسلم, is the tenth. And then he had followed that by an oath, by Allah, by the one whose hand is my soul, by Allah. It is, the Prophet وسلم, is saying, that is uh, a, a scene or an, an, an event or a place where the person has his face to be dusted, that means, uh, uh, like me, jihad, and so on and so forth. With the Prophet Sallallahu it is better than the action of yours, the ibad of yours, even if you had to live as much as Nuh So if you had witnessed a battle and, a, and, 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 and something like jihad with the Prophet Sallallahu it is better than one of you to do all types of ibadah, even if you had to live, what? As long as Nuh Right, so because that is why the love of the companions is religion. And that's why we kept saying, Wallahu ta'ala a'lam, may Allah curse the one who curses the companions, as what the Prophet he said, La'an Allahu man sabda ashabi. May Allah curse the one who curses or swears against my companions. By this, we come to the end of our talk, inshallah. Next companion will be Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib. I know five, yeah? Nine fifty, eighty fifty-six. Okay, right. We'll leave with a question for the question for you, inshallah. If you have any question, go ahead. As I said, Sayyid Ibn Zayd, we don't have really a lot about him because oh, most of them are authentic. They do have lots of things, but most of them are authentic. So that is why we stick to the authentic now. The Lerfa.
Right, regarding the dream of Talha, those people who have been seen that is entering paradise, is the ranks going to be different? Okay, that's a good question. We know for a fact that the martyr has a special rank with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From those ranks that the Prophet talked about, that as soon as he dies, all his sins will be forgiven from the first kashr of Allah. And he will be, uh, uh, well, he will be shown what? His seat in paradise. He will look at that and everything. And also, he will be given the opportunity to intercede for 70 of his relatives. Uh, and also, he will be given the Hilyat al Iman, the, which is the, 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 the garment which has only been given to those martyrs. And also, a crown. All of those, and also his blood will exude fragrance, musk, on the day of resurrection, Yom al Qiyamah. All of that is only for those who are martyrs. We do have that for, us, for, for sure. So, if in that story, which uh, Talha ibn Ubaidillah had said, where one had been martyred, the second one had been martyred later on, and the third one died later on, that is in a, in a normal way without jihad. But he had seen in his dream that the third one who lived longer died as normally entering paradise first. Then the one who was a martyr but died uh, in between the two, he was the second. And the first martyr, he was the last to enter paradise. Does that mean that if they enter paradise, that means their ranks is going to be the same? That means the best is going to be the last? And well, in general, in general, we say that he had the honor to enter paradise first. And you know that the first people to enter paradise are the poor of Muhajib. The first people to enter paradise, Fuqara and Muhajirin. And you know from the first poor people of Muhajirin, some who are not as good as some of those who are from the rich or the poor of the Ansar. Do you understand what I'm saying now? So some of those companions from the poor of the Anhajirun, even they enter paradise first, but they are not like some of those in terms of ranks, in terms of so on and so forth, like the ones from the Ansar. But they had the privilege of entering paradise first. But in terms of Later on, in terms of, for example, the martyr, he will have, as I said, his wound to be exuding fragrance and musk. That will not be for that person who died in a normal way. Uh, also, that he will be given that special clothes. That will not be the, for the normal person who died in a normal way. So, in general, we know the martyr is better. But the Prophet wants to show you what your salah will take you to what your ibadah will take you to. So the idea behind it, don't wish for death. The idea behind it is, when the Prophet was asked by that big with men, who is the best of the people? Is the one who lives longer. And the one who has a long, good record of deed. So if I said to you, brother, there is jihad. Is the answer of yours going to be, no brother, I want to live longer. Huh? I want to stay behind, because that would be better. You would not say that, would you? You would come to jihad. And when this person is going to get martyred, and you go back, you're not going to say, oh, alhamdulillah, I'm going to live longer. But who guarantees for you if you live longer, you're going to stay what? Upon the haqq. And that's why Khalid bin radiallahu anhu, he was mourning that he did not, what? Die as, as a martyr. He could be fighting, 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 and then he died what? on the bed, normal death. And there's a narration, he died like, he's like a donkey dies on his bed, that's not, not correct narration, by the way. Like a donkey died, but this, he died and not die as a martyr, as a person who was fighting. The, so, this is not to be taken as people think. They say, I can't buy jihad, brother, I can't know jihad because the Prophet said the person you know who lives longer is better, so I'm going to live longer. No, we can't say that. So, he's got the privilege is of that he says that he will enter paradise first. But would he have the other privileges? Of course not. Would he have the same rank? Of course not. No way. Or not. But 
Allah said it gives you, that is, if you did not die as a martyr because you did not have the opportunity or you participated, you did not die as a martyr, don't worry about it. Your salah. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he went to Tabuk, he said, there are people, wherever we cross a valley, wherever we pass a tree, that they are with us. How can they be with us and they are at home, mashallah, having a cup of tea and everything, while we are traveling to Tabuk and we are hot and, you know. How can they have the same thing? Because they wanted to come. So this person who lived longer, he is eager to have what? Martyrdom as well. So if the person wished to be a martyr, Allah will get him the martyr what rank even though he dies in his house. As the hadith of Prophet said. So those people who were behind, they could not participate with the Prophet because of the what? No camels, no mount. They couldn't come. They were crying. One of them is what? Al-Baqdad. Baka'un al I mentioned a hadith about the Baka'un al-Sabah. Al-Irbad al he can't have home. He went home. So he can't participate. He will have the same as well, woe booty, sure. Even though he was home. Just like Talha and Sa'id, they were given the woe booty from Badr. Because Badr was not planned anyway. It had just happened, the Battle of Badr. And they were outside. They were not in the Medina. They were in Sham. So Allah gave, the Messenger had given them the share of a fighter. So. Don't always take these hadiths as in general. You can't divide them like the, you put them in the particular thing. So the rank of the shaheed definitely is better than the person who lives, who dies on a normal way. But you don't know this person who dies in a normal way. He wanted to be a shaheed because this third person who died in his bed, he participated in the three battles. But he did not get what? Martyrdom. But if he went behind and he did not Fulfill the call. Aude billah. Aude billah. He's not one of these people who you know, live longer and have a good deed. He passed in three battles, but he did not have the opportunity. He did not have the death. Martyrdom. His two friends, his two brothers or cousins or whatever, from the same tribe and your other one, all of them martyred. First one, the martyr. Second one, the martyr. The third one, the third battle. He came back and he did not die as a martyr. Now. Father. Is it true again? I have no idea. You have to really show it to me, inshallah. Yes, uncle, do you have any questions? You said there are many stories about two Most of them are you should accept two. The two one, which is one I mentioned before, which is the one that I said that Umar al-Khattab radiallahu anhu arda, he had, as I said, wanted to uh, stop the Prophet and harass him while he was going to the Haram to offer his prayer there. So he was behind him. And as soon as he heard him saying Surah al-Haqqa, said, so he said, verily, he must be a poet. And the Prophet was reciting Surah al-Haqqa. He said, وَمَا هُوَ it is not the saying of a poet. So it's like and Allah is answering him. So he said, you must be a soothsayer. He said, Wala bi qawli And it's not the saying of a soothsayer. <laughs> so as soon as he said that, no problem, don't worry about it. <laughs> but don't have the adhan as in, you know, malams, and the adhan as in zakal um, So he said, that is, Wala bi qawli kahim, qadila ma tadakkarun. So here he said that Islam went into my heart. It was the first thing or the first spark okay, of Islam. That's one story. And another story of Umar al-Khattab embracing Islam, which is, um, you know, it could, it, uh, it could be authenticated, which is to do with, I can't remember it now exactly. Allah Mustafa, your adhan had made me forget. <laughs> Remind me? You remember the story? I'm gone. Again, 
اوكي لا نكمل في كم ان شاء الله كم مينيت كم مينيت نعم لا اذن تبغى تقول لنا ام بعد ان شاء الله اخذ ذا ريمبر ات كريت سكند ستوري انكل از ذات هي هاد ذا قران ان ذا هاوس اوف هيز سيستر فاطمه سو هي هاد ذا قران فروم هيز هيز هاد هاوس اوف هيز سيستر ريجاردين ذا سلابين اون ذا فيس از نوت اوثنتيك بات ذات هي هاد هيرد ذا قران ان ذا سيستر ان هيز سيسترز هاوس ذات از فاطمه ذا وايف اوف سعيد ابن زيد جزاكم الله خيرا سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت استغفرك